Hello, Pre-Calculus on your students. Here we are with our last section in 13, 13, 7, Mathematical Induction. We're going to use mathematical induction to prove that statement's true. I'm starting with a picture of dominoes here. Remember I used to stack up dominoes? There were two steps. You had to stack them all up so that each domino was just behind the other one. So we're going to talk about that step. And then there's also the initiation step of knocking the first one down, and then the second one will knock down, and then the third, and the fourth. So... That chain reaction is what we're trying to set up now when we do proofs by induction. Let's take a look at this uh, example here. We've got, we want to look at the pattern in the partial sums of this sequence. 1 over 1 times 2, 1 over 2 times 3, 1 over 3 times 4. And uh, the sum of the first one term is a half, because it's just the first term. The sum of the first two terms is a half plus a sixth, or two-thirds. Sum of the first three, a half. Actually, we can take the sum of the first two, which is two-thirds, and add on the third term. And so this very key concept here. It's very important to understand the difference between S sub 3 here, or in this case, yeah, S sub 3, and S sub 2, that's the sum of the first terms, plus the third term. That's the trick I did here, so I wouldn't have to redo all the work of any of T1, T2, and T3. And here's S sub 4, and this is the sum of the first three terms, plus the fourth term. That gives you the sum of the first four terms, and that's four-fifths. So it looks like we're always getting for our sum, our partial sum, 1 over, uh, actually 1 over n times n plus 1 is the nth term we're at n. What does this look like? We've got 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 4 fifths. Sure enough, it looks like we always have n divided by n plus 1. So how do we prove this? That the sum of the first n terms of this sequence is n over n plus 1. Well, it would be handy if it was arithmetic or geometric, but it's neither. We're not multiplying by a common ratio here. We're not certainly not having a common difference. So we can't use any of those formulas. We are going to try and prove it by mathematical induction. And here's the basic idea behind mathematical induction. Let s be a statement in terms of a positive integer n. Step one is to show that S is true for N equals one. And step two is assume that S is true for some N equal to K, where K is some positive integer, and then prove that S must also be true for N equals K plus one, or the next one. That's what I mean by N equals K plus one. You assume it's true for some K and show how it then it leads to it being true for K plus one. That sets up your dominoes. And then when you knock the first one down, all the rest will follow, and you'll prove it true for all positive integers n. So here's our first example. Prove the following statement for all mathematical integers n by mathematical induction, the one we just talked about. Our step one is show that the statement is true for n equals 1. Well, if n equals 1, we have 1 over 1 times 1 plus 1, and basically we only have one term. And that's equal to, now I'll put 1 into this, 1 over 1 plus 1. Let's see if we get the same thing. 1 over 2 equals 1 over 2. Check. We've shown that the statement is true for n equals 1, that the formula for the sum of the first one term is given by n over n plus 1. Now this statement is the trickier part. Assume that the statement is true for n equals some k. So it's basically the same thing, but I'm using the variable k to represent the idea that I'm arbitrarily picking a k in the sequence. And I want to show that it's also true for k plus 1. Show that this assumption leads to the statement also being true for n equals k plus 1. So what you do is you basically, this is the sum of the first k that we have written out here. And we're adding on the k plus first term. And we want to see that will make the sum of the first k plus 1 terms. And we want to see if the formula still works for that. What we do is a little trick here. And that is we take our assumption. We assumed... that all of this was S sub K, that the sum of the first K terms is equal to all these series add to, is equal to K over K plus 1. So we can actually take all this and say all of this is equal to K over K plus 1. That is our assumption. We assumed it's true for K, so when we add up the series up to K, we'll get this. We still have this part, and this is basically the k plus first term. That's 1 over k plus 1 
times k plus 2. And we have to show that's equal to k plus 1 over k plus 2. So that's basically what you have to do algebraically. Show that k over k plus 1 plus 1 over k plus 1 times k plus 2 equals k plus 1 over k plus 2. Well, we can do it with our LCD trick. The least common denominator here is k plus 1 times k plus 2. And I want to add up the left side and make sure it's equal to the right side. So I'm just going to do the addition part of the LCD. So we multiply this fraction by k plus 2 over k plus 2. That gives us k squared plus 2k plus 1 all over the LCD. And that's k plus 1 quantity squared over the LCD, which is k plus 1 times k plus 2. And we reduce one of the k plus 1s. And sure enough, they match equalize. So that's the two parts of your inductive proof. Show that adding the k plus first term on to the old sum of the first k will give you the sum of the first k plus 1 under the new formula. Let's go over the proof again, this time using sigma notation. You're trying to prove this, that the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1 over i times i plus 1 equals n over n plus 1. Step, show, uh, step one is show the statement is true for n equals 1. So we can write out this in sigma notation. i equals 1 to 1 of 1 over i times i plus 1 equals, put 1 in for this, then we get 1 over 1 plus 1. Well, this is just the one term, 1 over 1 times 1 plus 1. Is that equal to a half? Is a half equal to a half? Yes. Where this gets a little more efficient now is when we're dealing with it in terms of all these big sums. Now we assume it's true for some k, so notice how it's very similar to what we had over here. I've just replaced the n's with k's. So I take some k and show it leads to being true for k plus 1, so we want to show it's true for k plus 1 like this. And notice the split I do on this. I split up the sum from i equals 1 to k plus 1 of 1 over i times i plus 1 into the sum from i equals 1 to k plus the k plus first term. Right? So I'm, I'm not going all the way up to k plus 1. I'm going to have that separate out as a separate term. And the advantage of this is that now this whole thing is what we assumed. And that's going to be k over k plus 1. This is the k plus first term, putting k plus 1 into the index, the semand here. So all that remains to be seen then is notice by our assumption, all of this, all of this is just k over k plus 1 by the assumption we did up here. So just got to show that k over k plus 1 plus 1 over k plus 1 times k plus 2 equals k over k plus 1, and this is what we just did before here. Let's review it again. LCD equals k plus 1 times k plus 2. Multiply a numerator and denominator of this one by k plus 2. k squared plus 2k plus 1 over the LCD, or k plus 1 times k plus 1 over the LCD, which is k plus 1 times k plus 2. And that's equal to k plus 1 over k plus 2, because we get these canceling out. Okay? All right. Let's try another proof now. Prove that n cubed plus 2n is a multiple of 3 for all positive integers. Well, we're going to show that the statement is true for n equals 1. We're going to do inductive proof again. So let's look at 1 cubed plus 2 times 1. That's equal to 1 plus 2. That's equal to 3. 3 equals a multiple of 3. So we took on that part. The second part's going to be a little trickier, though. Assume that the statement's true for some n equals k. So for some n equal to some k. So k cubed plus 2k is a multiple of 3. So k cubed plus 2k equals 3 times, let's just say, m, where m equals an integer. That's a algebraic way you can express that something is a multiple of a number, if it's that number times some integer. Now, prove it's true for n equals k plus 1. So we put k plus 1 in the formula. We look at what is k plus 1 cubed plus 2 times k plus 1. And we start simplifying this, keeping in mind that we're going to place k cubed plus 2k with 3m. So we start expanding this out. Remember, this is k plus 1 cubed, so it ends up being k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1. 
plus 2k plus 2. So that's k cubed plus 3k squared plus 5k plus 3. Yes. Plus 2, sorry. No, no, it's the plus, plus 1 plus the 2 is plus 3. Okay, and now we go on, and we can see that we've got part of this kq plus 2k. See, we know kq plus 2k equals 3m, so what I'm going to do is pull the k cubed plus 2k out of this, leaving behind 3k squared plus uh, 3k plus 3. See, I split the 5k into 2k plus 3k, because all of this I can replace with 3m plus 3 times k squared plus k plus 3. But notice I can take a 3 out of all of these. 3 times m plus k squared plus k plus 1. And so this whole thing, k plus 1 cubed plus twice k plus 1 equals 3 times some integer. Because we said m was an integer and k is an integer. So if we take integers and square them and add them up, we're still going to have an integer. And we've shown that this is a multiple of 3 now. So k plus 1 cubed plus 2 times k plus 1 is also a multiple of 3. So by induction, by induction then, n cubed plus 2n is a multiple of 3. for all positive integers n. Okay, you should have some kind of concluding statement with your inductive proof where you tie these ideas together. And why did it work? Because we showed it was true for n equals 1. And then we showed that if it's true for k, it's true for k plus 1. That sets up our dominoes so that now that we knock over the first one, we've knocked over every single positive integer. That's it. Flange out.